All right. And so I won't be facing the camera for a little bit, guys. I apologize for that. I'm just going to kind of look aside. I do have two monitors going. Um, so when I'm doing my data analysis and such, I often, <laughs> I often have multiple monitors going. All right, guys. So uh, for today, today's really the last day of our um, Air DNA boot camp. For those who were not available for part one and part two, feel free to take a look at the replays on REI USA. And so um, uh, Airbnb and Air DNA, they are up to some really interesting things. Uh, we had several clients this week that we helped set up their uh, Airbnbs for the first time. And my usual standard of practice is to let them know, do not use the smart pricing tool that's within Airbnb. Um, I always found that the smart pricing tool tool often uh, underestimated my average daily rate. And so I, I don't like using it. I like to either manually price my properties, especially when I'm getting started. Um, or hang on, am I getting a message from you guys? Can you guys see my air DNA screen? Or are you seeing all of my chats and stuff? We're seeing your air DNA screen. Okay, all of a sudden things got a little wonky. <laughs> um, yeah, so I typically say do not use smart pricing. So for those of you who have Air, Airbnb listings, do you know what I'm talking about as far as the smart pricing that automatically um, is uh, populates within the uh, listing? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Yay, nay. Well, either way, um, I typically do not. Um, recommend using smart pricing. Um, I recommend you put in your, your base rate um, and you create that yourself. You know what your property should make based on what your neighbors are making and so on and so forth. So, however, guys, there's something new and it's super, super interesting. Uh, so we've covered all of the, these tabs up here, whether it's research of historical data, future data. Now we're gonna look at the investment part, which is, um, it's gonna start with price. Uh, the smart rates, it's brand new. And I really, really think there's a ton of potential here. So what the smart rates is looking at is once you upload uh, a property, once you upload a property, it will look at the six months um, future pricing of all the available uh, properties within your area. So uh, what all the other properties are priced at for the next six month, months, it will utilize that information to take into account um, what your base rate should be, what your um, most aggressive, least aggressive, and all of that is. Uh, and of course, it, again, these are suggestions, recommendations. Ultimately, uh, you know your property, you will know your property. And uh, that is my goal is for you all to know how to price your property, understand uh, what the market is doing and so on and so forth. So um, I personally have been having issues with uh, the tool. Like I said, it's brand new. So whenever I go in, yeah, I'm getting this property error. So what I did was I reached out to Air DNA and I asked them like, what's going on? And so there, um, there's a ticket out, but we went through um, the process of what that should look like once the fix it in, the fix is in. And here's what, um, what to expect. And they use um, a sample property there. So so for instance, uh, if they, you put in your property address, you would have to upload in your property address. And uh, once you put in your property, and this is property, for example, in Denver, it will provide you the um, average daily rate, uh, recommended average daily rate for the properties based on um, what's going on in the market. So the custom rate is listed here, you can put that in. Balanced over here, if you guys can see it, is pretty much the base rate is what, you know, is my understanding based on what they're telling me. Uh, conservative would be, so the balance is $88 per night. This is a, um, a studio in Denver. Conservative would be 79 per night. Aggressive, 
would be 98 per night. Okay, so that is the recommendation, but ultimately, um, it's up to you to really understand your market and what you're doing, what what it's doing. But when it looks at the overall market, and of course, mine is not property properly connected to really see, uh, the recommendation is for the properties like this Sunday here. There's an opportunity. It's one hundred and thirty five dollars more than what is well, fifty five dollars more than what is recommended. So it's one hundred and thirty five per night, the recommendation is less than that, according to what um, what the, the data is saying. And so again, this is new. I'm trying to figure out the kinks. I don't have access to it at this time, but um, it, it seems very, very interesting. And a little bit more about it. So the parameters that they're looking at to determine the pricing, and I have, it, it's listed here in this little box, but I wanted to type it out for you all to see what um, it, they are taking into consideration. And I think this is a much better tool than just the um, the smart pricing tool that's within the portal. They're looking at your base rate, the days of the week, the seasonality, holidays or events, demand score, and lead time. So I really think this has the potential to, to be super, super amazing if they can get the kinks out. Currently, I am using pricelabs.co uh, to assist with my pricing. Um, and I, I, I love it. I think that's been great. But if Airbnb can figure out how to do this correctly, I think you know that'd be very, very beneficial because they have a lot of the data. They own a lot of the data. They're constantly getting updates. So it's not a third party um, or another source of where the data is coming from. So just wanted to share that with you guys, um, what's going to be coming soon once that fixes in. Okay, so that was smart rates. Now let's take a quick look at market rates. And so I'll look at one of my two paid markets here. Let's see. I'll just stick to Rosemary Beach. Okay. I found this to also be very, very helpful. Um, so if I am looking at uh, the property that we're building in uh, Rosemary Beach, Florida, and I'm looking at the market there to see, um, for instance, what the other properties are um, booked at. Again, this is pacing information. This is future um, bookings that have been, um, the reservations have been booked. You can uh, filter it to say the number of bedrooms, okay? So I'm looking at five bedrooms and the accommodation. So for this particular property, we'll accommodate uh, 14 to 16. And let's look at our percentile. We we're typically in the 75th percentile of all of our markets. And so five bedrooms, accommodates 14. So you filter it down. You just wanna see what those properties are doing. Okay, so it's thinking. I think I'm super optimistic of what it can do, but it, it is a little bit slow. <laughs> All right, so, okay, so let's look at, for instance, um, the 4th of July, for example. Okay. So it, th what's great about it is kind of hover to this discover. So as I hover on the 4th of July, what populates up here is um, 2,210 properties are already booked at an average of $390 uh, per night. 
So $2,200 are booked at $390 per night. However, there's 271, you can see in here, oh, 271 properties still available. And the average uh, rate um, on the listing is about 399 per night. Okay, and so it's very high demand. It, it already has 89% uh, occupancy. Um, so I think this is really, really handy information. As you're working on your pricing tables, as you're analyzing properties to see, hey, you know, is this a property that's going to do well? Is there confidence in the market? Are people booking? You know, so here we have 91% occupancy. Okay, so I, I really, really like um, this market rates. Uh, I think it's very, very easy to um, kind of navigate and it works. Okay, so before I move on to the next tab, pacing, I'm going to pause for questions. Like I said, I really want this to be as user-friendly and interactive as possible. Any questions, guys? I actually have a question, Rachel, um, on this. So when you're looking at when you're looking at this view, are you really just looking at a holistic view of the area and not necessarily looking for how to drill down into comps? Because um, I know you said you have the filters, so you filter by the number of like of bedroom and bath, or number of guests, or number of beds. But will you filter by the area, like the proximity as well? Uh, absolutely, it's it's based on the proximity. So these are properties within the same market. So for instance, um, since it's Rosemary Beach, you're filtering to the city, um, they, it wouldn't take into account, for instance, Pensacola Beach. Does that make sense? Yes, I think that makes sense. Um, I know for, for you, are you looking at like the radius um, on the beach directly versus you know, a little bit more inland? Are you able to drill down to that level of granularity or um, not, not in this view? Not in this view. And another um, limitation would be amenities. So, you know, when you talk about comps, we would talk about, is there a pool? Is there, I'm not a realtor. So you tell me if I'm thinking of comps correctly, but is there a pool? Is there a hot tub? Is there a fire pit? Is there, you know, a deck, a rooftop party deck or, or anything like that. So it would not take that into consideration. It's looking at a radius. Um, it's not looking at beachfront. It is not looking at views or anything like that. It's looking at a specific radius, um, inland a little bit, um, beachfront a little bit. There's a proximity, like it wouldn't go all the way inland, you know, but it would go inland some. And um, what it's looking at is the average for all of those properties within that particular radius. And so, so the reason I feel as though my properties can do 75% um, or better, because there are a lot of things I can change amenity wise and update amenity wise. Um, I can't change the location. Once you buy it, that's it. But if you're in the market to buy, yeah, you can change the location. So if I'm not beachfront, I'm not beachfront, end of story, point blank, period, that's it. I'm not beachfront. However, can I um, add a hot tub if that's what the market demands? Can I add a fire pit? Can I add a spa? Can I add a pool? Can I add a golf cart? Can I add bicycles? And so on and so forth. Does that help some? Yes. Thank you. Um, yeah. Yeah. So this is the average price for those properties. And um, as you can see up here, um, that's the that's what the whole market is doing. Uh, the 2015. So when I move to like point to the little box, it moves away from me. So I can't really point to it. But that that's such a great question, Vanessa. And that's going to that's going to be, I think, the crux of how you decide on which property you want to purchase. Like I lived in this data before we finally selected a location and a property. 
Okay. So what I think is going to be great is once this is fixed, um, the ability for Air uh, DNA Airbnb to push these prices out would be great. The other limitation with uh, this particular um, tool is that currently it's not exportable. So the pricing tool that I use again, PriceLabs.co, it pushes my price out every single day um, at 11 p.m. It refreshes and it pushes my price out for me every single day. So in the morning, I'll just go ahead and take a look at the pricing tables, make sure everything looks okay for all the properties and I keep it moving. But um, this is more informational. It does not push these prices out to any of the uh, properties like Will House would or Price Labs or beyond. Um, hey, Rachel. Yep. What do you mean by pushing the price out? Pushing it, it out. So yeah, it adjusts it or what? Yeah, it doesn't adjust your price for your property. Does that make sense, Debbie? Yeah, I was talking about Price Labs. You were saying that Price Labs pushes the price out every day. Yeah, it adjusts my pricing every day. Okay. Does it usually make it go higher or lower? It takes into consideration all of those um, factors. So if there's a high demand, Price Labs.co. Oh, sorry. If there's a ton of demand, um, if there's an event, if NBA All Stars is in, it will change. It will change the pricing based on that. So, yeah, there are parameters that I set, but um, it, it adjusts my prices daily. So let me see, for instance. So my minimum I set for this one particular property is 550. So it can go lower, but it will not go below 550. The base is 597. And I keep my maximum open. I probably should close it, but I keep it open. And so based on that, here, here's the pricing that it has determined is appropriate for the property. And then you can compare it to what the neighborhood is doing and um, download that as a CSV. But um, let's see. So all of this you see here, um, it determined that's the right price uh, based on other properties, how they're doing, comps, um, events, holidays, day of the week. Um, and so on and so forth. And then this pricing you see here, it adds it to my Airbnb account, the property listing. So if you go to book my property today, um, this date here, July um, the 24th, will be charged at $607. Uh, the end user won't see that, for instance, like if you want to book my property, you're not going to see it's $607. What it would do is just take the average of the three or four nights that you decide to stay and then say it's $630 per night. And it just does that. But on the back end, I can see this date was this price, this date was this price and so on and so forth. And Price Labs determines the pricing. That's part of the, um, that's part of my, um, my tool that I use to manage the properties. So pro tip, <laughs> pro tip guys. That's great, thank you. You're welcome, you're welcome. All right, so this, I, I love playing with this. Um, it's new, I've got a shiny object syndrome situation, so <laughs> I really do like playing with it. All right, so um, next we're looking at pacing. So pacing again, this is six month data and you can filter to your number of bedrooms, entire home accommodates. I don't remember if we said accommodate 14 or 16. And we'll just look at the future demand analysis. All right. 
Okay, so let's look in here, for instance. I'll just pick a random day. So July 22nd, again, 87% occupancy. All right, so the booked listings are 2,000 uh, listings are booked at an average of 413 uh, bucks, average daily rate. And then uh, the available listings, 343 are still available at 361 bucks. And I find this to be very, very useful because what it does is it kind of informs um, your pricing. You always wanna be on top of your pricing. You don't want to say, oh my gosh, you know, um, we're not booked yet in July. Let me drop my pricing down to $100, you know? With this view, without doing a lot of digging, you can already see that, well, the, the average pricing for my, properties is 361 as a matter of fact 413 dollars is the average of what's already been booked so no need to panic at this time you know you can tweak it a little bit but you don't want to sell the farm okay any questions about pacing All right. And like I said, I don't want to go too granular because um, I think some of the next tabs are going to be really, really, really helpful. So I don't want to run out of time. All right. So next is seasonality. And seasonality is based on revenue per available rooms, rev par. And so let's do 14. Five bedroom. I think I was averaging them. Okay, so five bedroom accounts from two. So the rev par for a five bedroom in that region is about 520 bucks. And so um, the red is going to be a lower rev par. Okay. And then the green is going to be a higher rev par. And so this helps us see the seasonality a bit. December months are gonna be a little bit of a lower season is how the houses are priced. And then come March again, and that's what's interesting about this market. I have two peak seasons really in this market. So starting in March, things start to you know get cooking. June and July, it's cooking again. October is when it kind of dies down a bit. And then March, you're back in March again and it's cooking. So it's a really interesting market. But what I think is the most useful on here, the color graphs are, are nice or the heat map is pretty good. But down here is the, um, the booking lead times. So this tells us on average, how many days in advance are the guests booking? And so, for instance, for November, okay, they're booking four months in advance. Okay, so what that does, again, what that does in, to, for me as an operator, it informs me that right now in May, I had better be looking at my November pricing and making sure that I'm not selling the farm. I wanna make sure I'm priced competitively. Don't drop it too, too low, okay? And you know, make sure to capture some of that demand, some of that, because the supply is probably low at this point. Um, so that, that's what it tells me, honestly. 105 days is the booking lead time. So in, for July. 104 days for April. So this is a market that really, um, since it's more of a vacation market, they're planning ahead. Um, they have to have plans underway. So it shows that there is confidence in the market. People are going there. They're booking months and months in advance. So that's, that's pretty exciting. So that's pretty much the key to that. And so I'm going to jump right into this invest section down here. So the rentalizer tool, that's something that I've shared um, 
before, this is actually a free tool that you can have access to. Let me see if you all want to pull it up yourselves. I still call it the rentalizer, but they've rebranded. It's now called the um, Airbnb calculator. And I want to add this to my to our little chat. If I can find it, guys. There it is. It went away. <laughs> Okay, so I just um, send this to everyone. All right, I just sent the link to everyone. Oh, and um, Deborah had a question. So is AirDNA rates too comparable to what Wheelhouse or Price Lab has to offer? That's a great question. So in terms of the pricing, uh, Deborah, I've looked at it. It seems similar in terms of what the numbers are, but I only looked at a small slice of time. And so that, of course, is subject to change. And it does seem to be um, similar. However, the biggest limitation to um, the current smart tools, uh, smart rates tool, is that the pricing is not exportable into Airbnb at this time. So it, it doesn't push into your Airbnb listings. You would have to go in there and manually tweak some things uh, yourself on your own. However, uh, pricelabs.co as I was sharing a little bit earlier, is that dynamic pricing tool that it pushes the pricing directly in, onto your listing. So I think that would be the biggest limitation. Okay, so everyone, you should have the link here. And if you're able to go ahead and put in an address that you're interested in, um, it could be your own home if you wanna just try to you know, understand how it works. And I'm gonna walk through the same process as well. I'm in a house in the neighborhood, so there's five bedrooms, I think three bathrooms. Remember to change up those parameters, and it can accommodate 12. It's actually And so when you go to analyze your property, it may ask you to log in, create a login just to utilize the free, um, the free property tool. And um, you're gonna have this information here. So annual revenue estimate, average daily rate estimate, occupancy rate. Again, for me, the biggest thing is um, the occupancy rate here. Uh, the annual revenue, the average daily rate, honestly, uh, typically is underestimated based on what we've done for the past couple of years. However, the occupancy rate is huge for me. I want to make sure that I'm above 40%. If I'm looking at an area, I think I was looking at an area in Hogansville, Georgia, um, LaGrange, Georgia, like um, some of those smaller markets, and uh, the occupancy rate was at about 27 or 30 percent. I would not buy a property to Airbnb in that area um, if it's that low. If it's 49 percent, my rule of thumb is 50 percent. If it's 49 percent, that's okay. I can work with that. I can do things to overcome that. But 30 percent, that's going to be really, really hard to do. Unless I'm in touch with the travel board or travel bureau and I know that, you know, something's coming to town they're shooting a big film or something like that, I may consider, you know, um, investing in a property there, whether it's to purchase or to lease to Airbnb, something like that. But um, that's, that's going to be important. So 
let's go back to the actual property. This is um, the property on the beach that we're looking at. Um, a neighbor. This is ours is under construction. This is one right next door to it. And so I, I do this a lot. I'll use a neighboring property to identify um, whether or not I should invest in a property. So when I put those numbers in, okay, so here's the annual revenue for properties within these parameters. Here's the average daily rate and the occupancy rate. And what's kind of cool about this, the rentalizer, it, it brings up um, up to 50 comps and it gives you a projection you know this is a projection of what you will do over the next 12 months and again as we discussed um, Vanessa it does not account for, for amenities and so here are the comps down here guys so let's take a look at this and if you can look here okay you see we're not right on the water and the properties that it's comparing to is kind of tight knit here. Okay, so I, I feel like this is this is pretty good. And you're going to see two numbers here. The number on the left is the actual revenue that the property generated. Point blank period. This is the money that actually came in. This is not conjecture. This actually happened. It's real. On the right, the revenue potential is on average, this is the potential that they could earn if they have the home listed um, year round. Okay, so for this um, particular unit, maybe the family used a home, you know, a few weekends or something like that. So this is the revenue potential for year round. Okay, these numbers are really, really healthy numbers. And so I spend a lot of time in here. I'm gonna pause and see if there are any questions. Any questions guys about these comps? Okay. So AirDNA, Airbnb, is, they are so data-driven that they not only ex import the information from Airbnb, but they um, import information from Verbo as well, OK? So when I said this is my favorite, this part really, really is my favorite. All right, um, next is the top properties. The top properties are super duper ridiculous. So yeah, outside of being crazy, 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 um, the way I utilize this top properties tool is um, again, there are things you can't change about your property in terms of the location, but I do my best to offer every single amenity so these properties say they're 20 million dollar properties right and say my property is a five hundred thousand dollar property my five hundred thousand dollar property is going to reflect more like an eight hundred thousand dollar property revenue like closer to um these properties because i work on offering every single amenity that they offer. So if they offer a private chef, guess what? I'm reaching out to the local chefs and say, hey, would love to connect, would love to work with you. And I'm adding a private chef to my listing. Of course, it's gonna be available. They can book it. I can help coordinate that, pay for that. If they're offering bicycles, I'm gonna offer bicycles. If they offer golf carts, I'm gonna offer golf carts. If they have an outdoor fireplace and I'm under construction, I'm putting in an outdoor fireplace because I want to generate retirement revenue, right? This revenue is crazy. So I know that I won't get to this number because I'm not beachfront like these are, but I am going to get closer to the, this number as compared to the others that are in my market. 
Okay, so if I filter it down and I go five bedrooms or more, it's all of that. Okay, so still similar. The top properties are still similar. So I want to pause right here and see if there are any questions right now. Pretty cool guys, or what do y'all think? For me, this is pretty new, so I'm learning. I don't have much question. Okay. I mean, me too, I like it. This don't have too many questions right now, but the program that you have up now, it that, that really helps, especially someone that's new, to give you more of an idea of where to go instead of just like, flying off with no guide. I really like it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it has, it really has to make sense. And you want to analyze um, the property the way you would analyze any, any other piece of data. And I will tell you, I'm working to get a couple of um, the owners of Host Financial, which is a lender for short-term rentals to come and speak to us as well. Guess what they use to run their comps? This. Hey. Okay, so you guys are getting the inside scoop. They utilize this platform to run their comps. So if you wanna buy a house for $300,000, they're gonna go into AirDNA and see how much you can make. Okay, because they do asset-based lending and so they want to see how much you can make. And they're going to use AirDNA, some other information, but AirDNA is a big part of it. So if you do your homework and you say, okay, this is what it can potentially make, and you know you can get that loan secured, there you go. However, if you know you're just going by long-term rent rates, you know, you may not see the potential. So AirDNA. Guys, I promise you, it is not a perfect tool at all. I've got my beef with them. As you can see, I was on the phone with Mandy from Spain. Mandy, why is this broken? <laughs> but by far, it is the best tool that we as lay people have access to. Um, key data is another amazing, wonderful tool as well, but it is uber, uber, uber expensive. And then it only focuses on um, actual vacation rental markets. So my neighborhood, you know, in Peachtree City, Georgia, for instance, key data won't have data on, on that because it's, it's just, a, it's more of a working, you know, family suburban market, not a vacation rental market, if that makes sense. Rachel, I do have a question for you. I think where I am struggling just a bit is really picking out that that exact beach. Like, you know, you go down the Florida panhandle, right? And it goes from Gulf Shores, Alabama to the Hidden Coast. You know, they like the short-term shops. Is that's a great area. How did you land in Rosemary Beach? That's, that's a really, really good question. And it is a long story. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we take it offline. <laughs> no, and you know what? I do want to do a case study and talk about it. So I was looking for a property throughout um, the panhandle that was close to Panama City Beach. That was, um, have you ever been to Rosemary Beach, by the way? I have not. I've never even been to the panhandle area in Florida. Okay. Rosemary Beach is the buzz of Peachtree City, Georgia. So the funny thing is, and it, it's just so crazy. I, I can cross market. So when my guests come to Petri City, I can tell them, hey, I've got a place being built in Rosemary Beach. Everyone here knows about Rosemary Beach. It's just that kind of place where everyone vacations to. So it's a drivable market. It's, um, it's pretty high end. Um, I think Johnny Depp has a property next door. It's like, it's super uber expensive. I was not in the market for Rosemary Beach per se because of how expensive it was, but I had relationships with a few people and a realtor that convinced me 
to buy this plot of land as opposed to buying a condo that I was looking to buy. And so it is It is such a crazy long story. I, I, I wanna put it together to go through slides. Oh my gosh. I wanna go from like the life cycle, of how we got to where we got to and, and how we ended up, you know, how we started and how we ended up here with a, a new construction. This is something, you know, I did not think we would be able to do until 20 years from now. You know, in 20 years, you want to buy a beach property, a house close to the beach, blah, 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 you know, but I just wanted a little studio condo, you know, and um, turned out that the plot of land was much cheaper. I mean, it, 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 it's just such a great story. That's but, awesome. um, yeah, Rosemary Beach is the cat's meow here in, <laughs> in Peachtree City. And so, yeah, so I, I can cross market to my guests that are coming here. Oh, hey. Don't forget, we have the police in Rosemary Beach too that you can you can go and see. So, super cool. But um, as far as um, narrowing it down, the whole Panhandle honestly is, is doing is, is pretty good, especially the Alabama area. And at this point, you're just looking for the best deal that you can. You know, once I find a deal that's a really you know seems like a really viable good deal, I run my analysis and I go for it because there aren't, at this time, there aren't that many deals out there. So there's not a deal I won't look at. I'm looking at Alabama, I'm looking all over the place. I wanna kind of duplicate, you know, uh, this, this particular property. So I'll look at all the deals. I say, look at all of them. Okay. And so this last one, and I may just need to do a little video and send it out to you guys. But this last um, little section is awesome because for instance, since we're under construction, when we were looking to um, build, we wanna know what a four bedroom would generate versus a five bedroom would generate. And this um, really does a good job of doing a side-by-side -side comparison for you. So, and, um, and you know what? Actually, I wonder if this would be a good tool. I'll play around with this also. This probably is a good tool to compare um, one property versus another. If you're in the blessed position to have two properties that you're looking to put, you know, which one you're trying to decide which one to put under contract and it's available, you can um, compare the two properties and see, you know, what the expected revenue would be for, for, the, for both properties and do a side-by-side -side comparison. So I'll play around with this a little bit. This is also another new tool. So super, super excited about that. And so that pretty much concludes our boot camp, guys. It's, it was a good one. It was a long one, but I think it was a good one. Uh, we hung out for three boot camp sessions. Um, and the recordings and the replays are available. Just wanted to let you know what's coming up. On our next call, we're gonna have Ms. Brenna Maples. She's a lender at US Bank. Uh, she has a fantastic 10% down program. I know that there have been some changes. We're gonna find out if that's still available, to whom it's available, um, and uh, learn about jumbo loans, what the parameters are for our uh, market, as well as you guys' market. Um, and you know, it's gonna be more of a Q&A than anything else. So I'll be asking her questions. If you have any questions, um, get those ready, get those teed up. You can either send them to me or bring them, uh, bring them to the session. <clears throat> but she works with the short-term shop also. She primarily lends in, in um, Tennessee, the Smokies of Tennessee vacation rentals. She lends in Tennessee, uh, Florida Panhandle, uh, Georgia Mountains, and I think uh, there's another location, but she's gonna share all of that uh, with us. So looking forward to that. <clears throat> and if you guys have not done so already, please, please, please uh, sign up to get my spreadsheet. And this is actually a spreadsheet that I worked on with AirDNA to come up with the best 75 cities to invest in, the best 75 cities to invest in in 2021. And you would be surprised and best means, you know, ROI pretty much. So if you buy a property for, you know, $100,000, you're going to get a good ROI. But if you buy one for $8 million and you get a bad ROI, it's not going to make the list. 
So best in terms of ROI, how much you're paying for it versus how much is going to come in. And uh, rentability, is there demand? Is this area up and coming? You would be surprised the small towns that are listed here. And uh, so not all the states made the cut, guys. Not all the states made the cut. So what I did was I dug a little further. I have a second tab with, um, with uh, those states that did not make the cut. I gleaned and I found cities that would uh, be a potential um, to invest in. So it's not as detailed as my first tab, but it's other cities because I really believe if you're getting started, why not get started in your own backyard? So I wanted everyone to have, you know, a city represented in the U.S. So U.S. cities um, that are listed there. So I don't see any questions. Anything, guys, before we wrap up? I know I went a little bit above. Okay, awesome. So someone just said they would like the spreadsheet. Let me, I'm going to copy and paste. And I have a little um, low budget video that you'll get with the spreadsheet just to explain it. So if you go to shorttermgems.com slash best2021, and guys, place your email in the chat for me so that I can make sure I can reach out to you guys if um, for upcoming meetings, for upcoming data, upcoming spreadsheets, because I, I love spreadsheets <laughs> and I love getting this stuff out, getting this stuff together for you guys. So if you go to shorttangents.com, best2021, okay, yep, you can. Add your first name. Add your email like so. And submit. Get a little thank you. And for those of you who are not part of our little Facebook group, I'm gonna stick this in here too, so please. Please feel free to join our Facebook group as well. I love when tech decides to do its own thing. <laughs> Let me go ahead and uh, Yep, everything decided to stop working on me, guys. Okay, here it is. Yay, yep, I do have your email, Vanessa. <laughs> Yay. All right, guys. Well, thank you, thank you for all of you who decided to spend the day with me or the morning with me. Appreciate you guys. Look forward to our next call in a couple of weeks. Bye now. Okay, bye. Have a very nice one. <laughs> you as well. Thank you. Bye-bye. Enjoy. Have a good day, everyone. You too. Thank you. Thank you.